welcome to the Authentic Leadership Roadshow. Uh, this edition is an international edition and I'm very happy to have a special guest here that I met earlier this year in San Diego at the ATD conference. Uh, that's Jennifer Crittenden. Very welcome, Jennifer. How are you? Good. Thank you very much for having me on. You're welcome. I was, you know, we had this uh, amazing conversation last May at the ATD conference. Um, we talked about the books you wrote and we also talked about uh, where you came from and how you came to uh, write the books. Um, the, the books is basically a topic that I would like to deal with you also in, in, in another interview, but maybe just to give some idea and show people what we, what we were talking about at that time uh, are two books that are meant for women, women leaders, basically. And they are based on, on your enormous experience as a, uh, an executive in, in, in corporate life. So could you just tell us a little bit more about, uh, about your career, your, your track records? Yeah, sure. I worked in corporate finance for over 20 years. I started as a financial analyst in big pharma and ended up as a CFO here in San Diego in the biotech industry, which mm -hmm. is a big industry in San Diego. And after I stopped working full time, I was inspired to write that first book, The Discreet Guide for Executive Women, particularly addressing gender issues that I felt had hindered women that I worked with, because I was surprised during my career to begin with well-educated, uh, motivated, really interesting women, but to discover as I rose in my career that they dropped out, mm -hmm. even, you know, in this day and age, right, which we, we would think that would happen maybe a generation ago, but, but it's actually still happening. It is, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it bothered me because I felt as though a lot of times the reasons that they dropped out were because of problems that they had working in a male-dominated environment, mm -hmm. that kind of testosterone-fueled uh, uh, environment that that still exists unfortunately mm -hmm. in in corporate America, and I was really interested to see if I could put down in this book my observations of things that had gone wrong mm -hmm. and maybe some advice about ways to better handle uh, situations that you might encounter mm -hmm. that would lead to better outcomes for mm -hmm. the women that they, that they would stick in so to speak and and grow. To, into the executive suite yeah. mm -hmm. because I was alarmed by the time I got into the boardroom that I was the only woman there. Yeah. It's like, what, what happened to all these bright, uh, well-educated women that, that I started out with? What happened mm -hmm. to them? Yeah. And I think often we don't talk about gender issues in the moment, mm -hmm. right? That, that while we're working, we don't point out things that are happening um, uh, uh, demonstrations of sexism, uh, certain behaviors that are attributed to men and women, you know, those conversations can be awkward mm -hmm. and, and perhaps not even helpful when you're trying to interact in a group. Mm -hmm. But I felt as though they were in play. Mm -hmm. So my idea with the book was, can we document some of these things and provide a hand out mm -hmm to the women who come after me mm. so that they come into the workplace better prepared yeah. than some of the women that I worked with. So that was really my goal with that. Okay. With That's that amazing. Okay. I'm really looking forward to dig deeper into, into the book and into why people or especially women, or maybe not only women should read it and, and what are the, like the, the, the best advices you could give there. But a question that I have right now is, Okay, you are describing the situation for other women, but apparently you were not in that situation. So I, I, how was it different for you? I, I would say there that the answer is yes and no. Mm -hmm. I certainly learned things the hard way, right? Okay. I definitely mm -hmm. made mistakes. And looking back over those, I could see, okay, I can see that I could have handled that better. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I can make it so that somebody else doesn't have to learn that lesson the hard way yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, I would, but I would say too that uh, some of us, men and women, flourish 
better in that kind of environment, that kind of competitive, lay your cards on the table, uh, speak directly, mm -hmm. don't take offense at things, um, put aside your sensitivities, don't take things personally. Some of us just have that more in our character. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't think there's any surprise that really successful female CEOs report that they have a background in sports because I think the, mm -hmm. the culture of sports, at least in America, is often translated into the corporate world mm -hmm. where you have uh, people playing a role mm -hmm. and you have a coach and the job is to win and mm -hmm. there's, you know, there, there's a uh, understanding amongst the players about what the attitude is going to be between mm -hmm. ourselves and our goal. Mm -hmm. And if you have a sports background, a lot of that stuff comes naturally to you. Yeah. If you haven't played sports, some of the attitudes can seem peculiar. Mm -hmm. And I, so I, like I say, I think not only our character, but also our experiences can help us be successful in this type of special environment. Yeah. Okay. So, um, where do you put authenticity in this in this context or in this story? Because a lot of my female clients um, that I'm coaching um, in a preparation for taking on uh, the top uh, roles or not only the preparation when they're already there, they tell me like, okay, it's I'm really struggling with who I am because I have the feeling that I cannot be my real me, I cannot show myself. And it's not about uh, how people uh, interpret it then in terms of being emotional or being, it, that's absolutely not what I mean. It is about just bringing other things to the table, just uh, also uh, including other focuses, other other essential elements in, 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 in strategy, in interaction, in um, you name it. So how, how do you combine those things? I'm probably not going to give you the answer that you mm -hmm. want. <laughs> well, this, the second book that I wrote mm -hmm. is about executive presence. Mm -hmm. And that is really about your vibe, how you come across to people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is about performance and uh, modifying your behavior so that people perceive you the way you want to be perceived. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is about demonstrating characteristics that you want them to believe that you possess. Mm -hmm. It's a performance. I wouldn't say it's an act, mm -hmm. but I would say that it, you are consciously behaving in a way that makes a certain impression, which mm -hmm. means you can't behave any old which way you want right? Mm -hmm. It does mean that you need to be conscious of how you're coming across to people. Sometimes you don't say things that you would have said if you mm -hmm. were more relaxed. There is an artificiality to it. Mm -hmm. But that said, I, I, I actually think a lot of times we err on the side of not that even, and in fact of being extremely inauthentic, where people have been instructed that they need to be professional. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if this happens so much in, in Belgium, but this notion of being professional mm -hmm. in America often means that you don't show any affect at all, that you are really kind of without a personality. Mm -hmm. And so at networking events, you'll encounter people that just won't say anything interesting because they're so worried about saying something that might be inappropriate mm -hmm. or different, right? Or that you would stand out because of, of something that you said. Mm -hmm. That's bad. We, we it, do it want. It feels bad. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, and so we need to have people not be so inhibited that they feel as though they can't reveal their personality or mm -hmm. or show how special they are right because mm -hmm. we're all different and and unique and that what that's what makes it exciting to interact mm -hmm. with each other yeah so i i do worry that that there's that sometimes people err on the side of not showing who they are because they're worried about disclosing that mm -hmm. on the other hand you can't 
just behave any old which way you want in the workplace and expect that everyone is going to mold themselves around you and, 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 and be okay with whatever it is you've brought to the table mm-hmm. that day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so sometimes people feel as though, and I've heard women say this to me, well, I, the workplace place should incorporate my needs. Why should I have to change how I behave to fit mm-hmm. into the workplace? It's like, well, we're all trying to do a job here. And mm-hmm. if you behave in any old willy-nilly way, we can't work together as a team Absolutely. and get the job done that we mm-hmm. need to get done. So there's yep. kind of this the spectrum, I mm-hmm. would say. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. If, if, if you look at diversity and inclusion, um, how have you experienced it in corporate life at the top level? Say that last part again, sorry. When you, when you look at diversity and inclusion, how have you experienced that when you were uh, a CFO in a large corporation? And I'm not only, because when we, when we talk about uh, diversity, um, especially in Europe, a lot is focused on, on gender diversity. But when you, uh, when you look at research uh, on like the millennials and their expectations and, and their views on diversity, it is not only on, on gender or on uh, generation, or it is also diversity in, in ideas mm-hmm. and in uh, how you interact. So, um, do you, th- do you believe that there's an openness for that? I, I do understand that uh, you, you, you need to perform in a specific way, and especially at a high, high level, there's a lot of expectations. On the other hand, uh, how do you deal with like, um, a, a different focus on, on, on strategy, a different focus on, on tactics, um, the focus on people instead of focus only on the results? And it's not either or... Uh, this or this it's both it's a combination of both do you see possibilities there to bring that in the boardroom or in the uh, senior leadership teams i think that's going to be a very tough row to Mm -hmm. hoe and i Mm -hmm. i wish that i were more optimistic but Mm -hmm. we have a very long way to go when it comes to that But, but let me circle back for a second and tell a story Uh, that might be helpful to your Mm -hmm. listeners about this issue of authenticity. When I was a senior director, I was um, uh, asking to be promoted to be a vice president. And my company very wisely sent me to the Center for Creative Leadership for a week, which was a fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much from uh, going there and especially from the 360 assessments that we got in preparation for going there. And Mm -hmm. lots of people have gone through 360 assessments and there are mixed um, reactions to them. I will say for me personally, it was extremely helpful Mm -hmm. because I had probably erred on the side of being very professional at work. And I was really surprised to discover that people that I worked closely with didn't even know that I was a runner, for example, Mm -hmm. and that I was very interested in sports. And it was so eye-opening for me to realize that I had just really kept a big part of myself uh, secret. Mm-hmm. And and that that people really wanted to know more about me and who I was as a person. It really dramatically changed my approach to mm-hmm. the people that I worked with, mm-hmm. and and opened my eyes to these issues of how we how we see people that we work with and how important it is that we get to know them as human beings, mm-hmm. right? That that, yeah. that 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 we're human beings. Mm-hmm. To go back to the to the uh, question that you're getting at uh, about diversity and inclusion, that said, I I firmly believe that we need to embrace diversity, mm-hmm. not only in terms of gender, but in terms of perspectives, in terms of our um, cultural upbringing, 
um, in terms of our size. I think we mm-hmm. need skinny people, fat people, regular sized people. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that there's a lot more to this notion of diversity than we have been willing to talk about so far mm-hmm. for, for a lot of reasons. I think there are certain people who are benefiting from the notion of diversity simply being basically about white women. So the, there are a lot of pitfalls there. Mm-hmm. That said, most people are not interested in real diversity. They don't really want to hear from people that don't think as they do because it's a challenge it and, mm-hmm. it, and it makes it harder to, it makes it more competitive. It makes it harder to get things done. Mm-hmm. It takes longer. There are um, challenges that come with embracing diversity that we aren't not yet talking about. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. people are sort of, you know, doing the politically correct thing. Oh, we need to have more diversity. They're not really thinking seriously about what it will take to do mm-hmm. that and yeah. and what the um how how tough that's going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is a stretch. It is uh Making things, like you said, making things more difficult, making things more complex, um, takes more time to have everybody on the same on the same line. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, of course, to to know if um, if you want to attract younger people who have a completely different focus, because let's say that most of the senior levels are um, all the generation leaders um if you want to attract younger people and if you want to make sure if you want to retain young people and um involve them also in the decision making um and and encourage them to 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 build their careers in the organization do you believe that we can that we can not do it and that we cannot be serious about it, uh, that we need to take it further than the, the political uh, narrative that we hear a lot. I, re- I, I absolutely do. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a certain, um, what can I say? It sends a message when mm-hmm. your senior staff is all older white male. Mm-hmm. It sends a message when your political parties are all older white males it, that you just can't get around it. No matter mm-hmm. what you say, no matter what you put in your mission statement, no matter how much PR, how many awards you win, yeah. mm-hmm. if, that, if that visual is still there of older mm-hmm. white males, it, it, you just have a serious problem. Mm-hmm. And and we need to recognize that mm-hmm. and um, and understand that we won't make progress until we change that visual. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then if you look at um, uh, large organization, larger organizations, the, the intercultural aspect. I mean, uh, most of the American large corporations have activities all over the world where they are also um, confronted with uh, the fact that in certain uh, regions, the the diversity is looked at in a completely different way. And if they want to include these people in their um, top levels, um, you could say, I I agree in a way that um, um, you need to, to know the rules of the game and you, uh, you, can, you, you can adapt uh, and you can adopt uh, some of those roles or a lot of those uh, roles. But um, what we feel here, in, for example, here in Europe, um, we are not ready to do that. At a, there's there are limits to do that. We 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 want to be able to to say okay, this is this, this is not a rule for us because the rules were developed by men. Mm-hmm. And if you want to play a game that is more that di- you know that is more um, diverse that that or that includes other uh, other elements, then you also could change the rules of the game. It's a little bit bizarre 
to me, it is also, it is bizarre that if you want to include other players, that you also should change the rules of the game. I think Does that, that resonate is that because I mean, otherwise it's like saying, okay, let me, let me give you a very, um, metaphorically, this is very, very short, but you could say, um, we want to include people that cannot see in our, uh, in our game, but we will, we will not do anything in order to make sure that they can at least know where the ball is. That's not fair. You should include rules that are also um, helping uh, those people to play the game as well and change the rules. I, I, you I, about that? Yeah, I mean, you hear this all the time from the diversity advocates. Mm -hmm. The question is, how are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. And I guess my sense has always been that you that you first get people in decision-making positions mm -hmm. and then you start changing the rules mm -hmm. yeah. because I, I just don't see that organizations that are functioning under a certain culture will voluntarily say oh let's just change this culture that's worked for me and that I've been successful at yeah. absolutely it, yeah. I mean I think you can do a lot right mm -hmm. you can you can explain about bias, you can educate, you can train, you can um, uh, raise awareness. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think until we really get people in positions of power that we're going to do much mm -hmm. uh, to, to really make it so that it's a, that it's a nice place for everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, and that's going to take time. It's, Absolutely. it's a very yeah. tough, row to hoe and it doesn't help when people that we need to have at the upper levels of the organization keep dropping out mm -hmm. and and not and not staying with us mm -hmm. so it's very disturbing to me for example to see so many young people wanting to start their own businesses or wanting to work from home mm -hmm. because basically what they're saying to us is I don't like this environment that's here mm -hmm. and I don't, and I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. We need to fix our work environments so that, so that they want to work with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's a real problem for mm -hmm. me is that yeah. our workplaces are so unhappy and this isn't even about um, anything very profound. I think this is simply things like having a nice boss um, having That's cordial, <laughs> you know, having, having cordial relationships mm -hmm. with the people that you work with, mm -hmm. uh, not being bullied at work, not being harassed at Oops. work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, so I tend to, to, uh, think about the small things first yeah. and, uh, see if we can at least make those things be okay for people. Yeah. You have been there. Uh, what would be your advice to, um, to women CFOs, CMOs, to, to women at the C, in the C level at this moment, um, what would be your advice to to make sure that um, younger younger women, future uh, leaders, are encouraged to 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 you know to to take up the responsibility to owe that process to 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 grow into the, those roles? What could they do? What should they do? stay there because mm -hmm. it, when you stay you're you're visible and you're a role model and that's very important for mm -hmm. for uh for women who are coming up through the ranks to see that <laughs> there's somebody up there mm -hmm. i would say to you hear this from from women more junior women that the senior women don't pay any attention to them mm -hmm. and that's that's always surprised me because i I personally felt such a responsibility to the women who were coming after me. Mm -hmm. I think as we, those are very busy jobs, right? Those, those high level executive jobs are, are really busy mm -hmm. and very demanding. And it's hard to remember, oh, there are other things I need to do besides just do my job and, mm -hmm. um, and, and lead and participate in the way that I need to as a professional, but to remember also that, if you can, if you uh, have the volition and that's something that you're good at mm -hmm. is to, is to reach out 
to the women that are uh, coming along behind you because that's so powerful and so meaningful. Just a gesture, just a, a speech, mm. just a um, demonstration of your interest. I, you know, I'm not saying that you need to spend five hours a week mentoring the women who come after you, but but really there are some gestures that you can take that I think are very powerful mm-hmm. and important. So yeah. that would be my that would be my request, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a good one. And if you would give advice to the younger women in how to build their their strategy, also how to build their 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 self confidence, their presence, what would that be? So I'll answer a little bit of a different question first, because as women look up through their own organization, Mm -hmm. they may not see very many women or they may not see women that they resonate with or they may not be there at all Mm -hmm. or the women that are there may not be very friendly. That Mm -hmm. said, there are lots and lots of female executives who are extremely visible Mm -hmm. in the public eye. And I think you can look to those women Mm -hmm. and see how they carry themselves, you know, watch interviews, um, watch videos, read what they have to say. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of wisdom that's out there, even if it's not in your own company. Mm -hmm. And I I would really fully take advantage of that. Now we have uh, so much information that's available to us on the internet. So it is about finding your role model or role models. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in terms of building your executive presence, I do work in my program a lot on mimicry. So finding someone that you, who has a style that resonates with you and that you like, um, whether it's, you know, Catherine Graham or Gloria Steinem or, you know, any number of uh, CEOs. Mm -hmm or C-suite executives, you know, they all have a different style. And what I love to observe about that is they're often really different one from another. Mm -hmm. They have found ways to rise to the top, but still carry with them something that makes them unusual. They definitely don't all look alike. And I would say there's more variety amongst the the female executives and there is amongst the male executives. Really? Uh-huh. Well, why, why that is, I, I don't yeah. know, but mm-hmm. that's but, how um, you see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is, which is great. Right. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that means that you can use your own, whatever it is. Style your own, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And be successful uh, mm-hmm. using that. Yeah. So I, I, I do um, recommend watching videos, practicing how people sound, what words they use, Mm -hmm. that whole vibe that they have and finding one that you like and and playing with that and trying things out, you know, and especially modeling them. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even consciously Mm -hmm. modeling them Um, as you become more observant, you become uh, more sensitive to the very subtle ways in which people convey things Mm -hmm. with their body language or their tone of voice or their gestures and how people respond to them. Mm -hmm. So it's an education, right? It's something that you build throughout your career, but Mm -hmm. it can be a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Who or what has inspired you, Jennifer? I had a uh, boss when I first came into the corporate world, mm-hmm. who we didn't use the word mentors um, back then, um, but he definitely was. And he uh, was involved in my career from the first 10 years that I was with Bristol Myers Squibb. And I'm amazed how often I think of him and things that he mm-hmm. said early on that uh, helped me be a good manager, helped me understand how the workplace worked, really did a lot of instruction. He was, a, he, he was Armenian and, and very tall and very forbidding and a really sc- a very scary guy. <laughs> but, and and you, didn't wanna, you didn't wanna tangle uh, with this guy. Mm-hmm. But, but, it, but he, and I would say a couple of my peers too, we really benefited from 
how tough he was on mm-hmm. us, right? He, he taught us to stand our ground and make our arguments and be convincing and do our homework. And um, he also had an attitude about that um, because he was, he was not a softy, right? Mm-hmm. So he would, he would lay things out as they were. And it was up to us to, to suck it up. But he also helped us understand that over time, things would become right. So things mm-hmm. might be screwed up right now, but hang in there because eventually the right things will happen. And more often than not, he was right. Yeah, you trusted him in that. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He, w- he was really a, a pretty fascinating guy. And like I say, I'm, I'm often surprised how often I'll, something that he said, you know, will, will ring Still. in my, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That must have been a very special boss. Yeah. Yeah. He was great. He was mm-hmm. really great. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you also taken that role for the people that worked with you, for the women that worked in your teams? Oh, definitely. I would say the exact, I would, I would say the exact same words that he used to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, no, I absolutely, I carry on his, uh, his his, ideas, his ideas. Right. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So, so what's your next project, Jennifer? The, my latest book is the, what's a guy to do, how to work with women. And that mm-hmm. book is uh, targeted at men who want to build collegial relationships okay. with their female colleagues. Mm-hmm. So this is in the wake of Me Too and men saying to me, I-, I just don't know what's okay anymore. I don't know what I can say to women. And so right now I have those uh, books that are really intended to help us work better together. Yeah. And my quest is to make our workplaces more welcoming to mm-hmm. everybody because yeah. we, from the stories I hear from my clients, we have a long way to go. Mm-hmm. We have mediocre bosses, bad meetings, crummy leadership. We, just, mm-hmm. we have a lot of bad things going on in our workplace. Mm-hmm. And it's frustrating to me because we know what good workplaces look like Mm -hmm. and we we know what good management is Mm -hmm. and so i i'm dismayed that we're not exhibiting those um Mm -hmm. as we should be so that's my that's really my quest right now i i hope to start a podcast in which we can talk about specific examples of problems at work Mm -hmm. and then discuss um who ways in which we might be able to fix those yeah Yeah. well i guess i mean you you have an amazing experience i mean you you've been there you know you know uh what you could what you could do what you should do what you should not do uh you have an amazing experience also with with your clients so you you have all these stories from all different places that that um that are pretty much the same I, I guess there are there are the exceptions uh luckily but uh, which are pretty much the same and i think i i really i really admire it i really think it's amazing that you you wrote the books in order to be able to reach a, a, a large large audience worldwide to to give your tips and advice and your views and insights and what is very specific is your last book now where you uh where you uh, address the men because I, I can only imagine that there are a lot of men with a lot of questions on how to behave and how to make things better because I, I do believe there's a positive intention anywhere. It's, it is about how to do it and how to, how to stretch, how to get out of the comfort zone and, and do new things and walk new paths. That is also always a little bit scary and, and, and difficult and different. So it's amazing that you, uh, that you also address that, uh, that audience. And um, I would be very honored if, uh, if we could also talk about that book, because uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that here we also have an audience to, uh, for, for, that, uh, uh, for that subject. So um, I would say let's, um, let's see. And, and also for the audience, uh, just uh, look out for, uh, for a next session that we are going to, uh, that we are going to uh, set up. And where we can dig deeper into into the books and the why of the books and and, and how to use them also to uh, to make the progress. How does that sound? 
No, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. I really think it's time for us to turn to the men and mm -hmm. say, come on, mm -hmm. come, come with us now, because we've written hundreds of books for yeah. women. We've got all these programs for mm -hmm. women. And, th and that's great, right? I, I think to the extent that those are helpful, mm -hmm. that, that's a very positive thing. But we've been working on this problem for a long time, and we're not as far, far along as, in my opinion, we should be. Absolutely. And I really think it's time to start putting pressure on the men and mm -hmm. saying, come on. You, it's yes, your turn. Yes, yeah, it's your turn. Come on. This can't all be on us. Mm -hmm. to, to change this, mm -hmm. you need to participate too. And it needs to be a conversation, right? That there needs to be explanations mm -hmm. about why things happen. And, and we need to understand things from everyone's point of view, mm -hmm. not, just, not just the woman's. And so we need to hear from the men. I know that's not a popular position right now in the mm -hmm. United States because uh, there are a lot of people who don't think we should hear from the men. But I do. I, mm -hmm. I think that they have a lot to say. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I think that they can be very astute at intervening and in recognizing sexual harassment or bullying mm -hmm. or other bad behaviors at work. And I would hope that they would want to help us make our workplaces better. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's my hope. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a beautiful joint mission. Absolutely. And, and I think... Uh, with this works, we, we can conclude for today. It was it was so in, inspi inspiring, uh, Jennifer, to hear your views and your experience. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of people watching this will uh, will learn from this and will have you know will have some stretch also in in how they can look at things. And I'm really looking forward to a, to a next session where we dig deeper into the books. Um, I will already uh, put the links uh, for the books uh, on, the, um, on the leadership community as well. So people who are already triggered by what you have written have the possibility to order the books. And uh, I'm really looking forward to our next session. Thank you so much. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much, Helen. It was wonderful to talk to you. Likewise, looking forward to talking to you soon. And also okay. for the for the audience, um, please keep looking, uh, please keep watching, uh, looking for new insights that you can take with you in order to to uh, build your uh, professional and, and also personal track. Uh, keep reading. I'm a big fan of uh, of books because they they open your world uh, and you can really own that initiative uh, there's no you, you don't need anybody to uh, to be curious and to, and to read so keep doing that and i'm looking forward to see you again bye <laughs>